said. Um, but I will um, not be so relaxed about overgrowing. All right, I'm going to start, uh, Mr. Brody, with you. A perceived lack of public input in the development of our city has been a hot topic. Do you believe that there should be consistent public input throughout the process of all development applications, and if so, why? If not, when do you think public input is most effective in the process of development permitting, if at all? Okay. <clears throat> well, obviously there's a lot of factors at play. Uh, the, you know, this is everyone's city, and everyone wants to see it developed appropriately, but we also have property rights and individual property rights at play. Um, you know, I personally uh, am a believer in the administrative review process. I do believe that the public input is most important when you're deciding how to configure your city according to the codes, the zoning codes that govern how you build certain uh, buildings and structures on certain properties. The reason for that is manyfold, but functionally, I think we end up with a better designed city in the long run if you do that. You're looking at more of a comprehensive view and a comprehensive plan. Instead of having little mini battles and wars over single every single piece of property that's being developed. Um, you know, the code is not perfect. It never was meant to be perfect. It is somewhat of a li living organism that needs to be addressed. But public review and, and, and public hearings uh, one of the other problems that I have with, a, with, a, with an expensive public review process is just that, that it makes the project itself more of, uh, expensive. I want to see more affordable housing units going into this community. Affordable housing is a huge issue to me because it's a traffic issue. Um, and the other thing is I don't want to make buildings and construction political. I don't want a competitor who hears that another pizza place is going in at the end of the block to be able to go and put that person through expensive public hearings, expensive public uh, review processes. I think that it's best addressed when you're dealing with the code and you're, you're, you have an overall view of the community and you can design a code that works. You know, there is a public, there is an appeal process if there is a major problem. And one of the things that's been raised as a barrier to that process is the cost. You know, I'm okay with reducing that cost. If there's some barrier, financial barrier, to, to being able to address a serious issue with, with a development, then uh, I'm all for reducing that issue. But, you know, it's a fundamental land use issue. It's a design issue. And I think our energy is best spent addressing these things in the zoning code which is what we're doing right now. We have somebody doing this right now. We're going into that in a little bit with the form-based code. So that's my position. Thank you. Well, I don't want to run out of energy, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll sit for a moment. Um, you know, public input um, in the first place is what you hear about tonight. It's about electing the right city commissioners, people that you agree with in broad terms. Um, you know, the arguments that I've heard about uh, you know, having everybody involved, and I've heard some uh, interesting stories, you know, going out to the pilot and telling him, well, maybe to the left, maybe to the right, you know, you've got to trust the pilot to land the plane. And uh, we have, or we should have, clear rules. That's what a code is. Code is essentially your law. And uh, if we don't like the code, and, and we'll talk about that in more detail later on, but it's as, as it relates to public input, if you don't like the code, that's the thing that needs to be addressed. No amount of discussion will change anything. A good example, Patrick Gannon's here, and he's made this point several times, and it's true. The Demarque has been very controversial for the people that are built, who live there at 1350 Main. And uh, it's controversial, you know, because it's right up against them, and I get that. Um, and, you know, it's controversial because it's historical, and then it's controversial because they don't want to put uh, precast concrete in in case it drops on someone's head, etc., etc. There's a bunch of different reasons. Been hours and hours, including last just uh, on Monday night, of conversations. But the bottom line is, every single thing that they wanted, they got. And the reason they got it is because it's legislated, it's stipulated, it's clear. There's no ambiguity. And that's a good thing. It would be a terrible thing if everybody was going to be able to negotiate every single little thing 
um, that was going to be built. For a start, nothing would get built. Um, and then the other thing is that um, it would be impossible to enjoy your property or to develop it or to improve it to the, uh, to the way that you want. This is America the last time I looked. One last thing that I just wanted to cover, and, and there are other issues that we maybe disagree on, be more interesting, but um, single family neighborhoods is something that mostly hasn't been talked about. You know, this stock movement, which we'll talk about later too, um, talks about high rises and so on and so forth, but they haven't really talked about single family neighborhoods. One of the things that I find strange about America um, is that you can increase the, uh, the coverage on a lot um, to a, what seems to be an extraordinary extent. If you go out west of the trail, the developers will take a piece of land and they'll build something which is four, four and a half thousand square feet where the previous house was two thousand square feet. And I think that's something that we might want to look at. And also architectural style and similarity. So um, I think code is something that we should pay close attention to, but mostly you've got to pay attention to who you elect. Thank you. If